topic is what the stakeholders need to do uh, now to promote steel and to take things further structurally and uh, see that the uh, the steel industry uh, increases and uh, the demand of construction. Uh, the stakeholders basically are the clients, owners, government, and the project uh, architect, structural designer, manufacturers, and suppliers, and steel contractors and vendors. Basically, I'll straight away go into the client, owner, and government. Upgrading knowledge and awareness of pros in steel construction is very important. The clients and owners need to thrust that, no, we don't want to do RCC buildings, we want to do steel buildings. How do we do it? Basically, the awareness is, more, the comfort zone is that in RCC, they don't know what, they know what to do, the engineers know what to do, the project managers, managers know what to do, but they don't want to get into something new. So basically, it's the owner, the main, uh, the developer, the guy who's putting in the money should take in that thrust that he should know, we should try an alternative, we should do. Adding these type of seminars becomes very important and seeing that these people participate, the owners and the government agencies, becomes a very important uh, 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 you know, way of thrusting the steel industry. The governments also should take, see what happens is that we have the AS, ASTM code, we have the Euro codes, they t tell you how to do the steel designs with limit state methods. So what happens, this design becomes very economical. Now what happens, we are use yet using working stress. So what happens is that there are codes are developing, but our steel codes are lagging behind. So designers, we use the, we, we use the Euro codes for designing if you want to really economize the structure from steel point of view and cost point of view. The project, as I said, also the steel, you know, uh, steel is a, definitely a carbon point gainer. So as is we are going for platinum ratings, green buildings, so this becomes a plus point and the clients need to be educated on that also. Now as far as the architects are concerned, basically they, a lot of architects are yet are using steel, but they are not many, they, are, they have to be, they have to spread that. That a lot of architects should say that you know what happens is that when we are using steel, we get high stress steel, we can reduce the capacity of the, we can reduce the size of the column by the increased capacity, get more carpet areas get more headroom, even though you have uh, huge load loadings, beams, large span beams, you can land up, you're also using very thin beams, pre-cambered beams, and get very high headroom. So for that reason, they, they have to be educated. Architects have to be educated, and these seminars become a very good interactive point to tell them that this is what is to be done, this is how it has been done, and what can be done. Then of course, BIM is being used and should be encouraged to be used, because what happens is the 3D, the ideas of using the, the architect using steel and how they can use it for their architectural forms can be uh, you know, done in all type of structures, not only for stadiums or airports, like as you can see this building where you have the outside form used and looks elegant and plus structurally this is uh, the form is taking the whole uh, uh, elevation and like these type of buildings. Now the structural designer also as I said they need to basically enhance their uh, uh, abilities to design composite design. Because what happens now, the new code which has come out for earthquake and all, they have given different factors for time period for uh, composite. And uh, so things are moving in the right direction. But uh, if you just design the structural steel, the regular method, it's like for the joints, the welding, because of the speed in construction. So this education to the structural, uh, maybe a seminars, Regarding design workshops, technical workshops need to be conducted. So what happens, the designers get to know how to design the steel in a more efficient manner and in a more sp so that the constructability is fast. The other good concept would be like how in, uh, you know, you have, you have different joints. Now making different joints, shear joints, shear moment joints, become a little difficult on site or also on the workshop. Suppose we have manufacturers doing that. You know, giving, like, you pick up phone and you say, I need a 450 ton shear joint or this. So that also could be, it's a, it's a concept which can be promoted. So what happens, this will enhance the industry. Uh, uh, the, the, promo, uh, the uh, what do you call, international seminars which we are looking at, 
basically we should attend because when I attended one seminar, I was mind boggled because they were using niobium in the, it's a microalloy thing, uh, uh, ingredient where basically the steel enhancement was going up to 1000 to 1200 MPa. And this is the type of uh, steel which is available and going to be available in the balance, I mean in the international market. So the knowledge of having uh, this type of, uh, you know, steel available, I think is a must to, you know, people have to attend international markets uh, seminars to see that uh, they know what's happening uh, around the world. This is just uh, some, uh, uh, now the manufacturers, basically it's a chicken and egg situation, inventory. Should I have the inventory or, and the distribution or should the structural designers design the sections? So we don't design because we feel this is not available. So I feel manufacturers should have inventory and should have a good distribution system and then only the designers can use because what happens we design something, we find out that uh, it's not available or it takes five months to uh, uh, come around So uh, to the site. So this, this uh, situation has been killed in Dubai and other places where they have stocks. So they have stocks and they can deliver it to you immediately within one week, two weeks, depending on the distance of the site. Uh, now, you also have uh, manufacturers who start giving different types of sections, like built-up sections, hot roll sections, different, different sections which are available, ASB sections, and uh, uh, these type of sections, if available, then we can really use it in different buildings for different shapes and uh, make it more efficient because it has to be steel efficient, tonnage efficient, and speed efficient. Okay, and, and of course, the uh, uh, varied high section stresses, like we are talking about 355. Whenever I discuss with manufacturers, they start with, oh, we have 250 MPA only, these are the sections available, which is the normal sections. But now in the market, we are looking at, like I was talking to someone over here, stainless steel sections are available at 450 MPA. Does anyone know that, what type of sections? Because stainless steel is now, we feel they're very expensive, but there are different types of varieties of stainless steel available in the market. There are the lower variety, ferretic, non-ferretic. So these availability knowledge should be given to the, uh, to the designers so they can use this. And basically, I'm talking about, uh, the, as Tata Steel was talking about the fire steel, now they're coming up with corrosion steel, like how you have uh, a Tata Tor steel with you know, corrosion resistant steel. Why not in the structural steel sections we get that? So we don't need to uh, apply uh, uh, you know, corrosion uh, uh, epoxies, uh, protection epoxies or something like that. We can go faster. But basically, uh, uh, and you know like these hinge connections which I was talking about. Suppose we get this to order, then things get much faster. These are some of the sections like asymmetrical sections which are available in the market with the bottom flange larger. Why aren't, why aren't that not, why is that not available here? And of course the steel contractors and vendors will have to basically look at how they can go fast and uh, speed wise. So basically what I said, most steel contractors vendors should be proficient in erections using heavy equipment like uh, cranes. So what happens is that when they use heavy equipment, they, they can speed up the constructions, the method, they should have workshops. So what happens when the workshops are available? So that should be the minimum criteria for getting a job. You have a workshop, then we give you the job. So then you, you get the quality, you get the speed, and you get, uh, then what happens, the, the building comes up in a record time as it should be, and then it, you know, you, that promotes the steel industry by itself. Thank you.